Well, this is a little different look, isn't it? Hi, Gary Zacharias, uh, taking a look at uh, English Essentials. I thought maybe this time, uh, we talked last time about fragments and few sentences and comma splices, and I thought it might be good to actually take a look at some examples and to, to figure out where the problem is and why it's a problem and how to fix it, rather than just saying, well, go find some examples. So here we go. This is on page 43 of your book, but I thought this way everybody's going to be looking at the same place. So here's sentence number one. It says he cleaned up his room, then there's a comma, then he called his best friend, period. Now that's not a good sentence. That's actually a splice. And a lot of people look at it and go, well, it looks pretty good to me. It's got a comma and it says, then he called his best friend. And it's got two different ideas. He cleaned up his room. He called his best friend. But it's being joined by a comma then. Okay, here's the catch. I know it's going to sound picky. But if you remember, we talked about fanboys, a boys fan, when we were doing parts of speech. Those are conjunctions. Those conjunctions are the only way with a comma that you can join two sentences. Anything else like the word then or however or on the other hand or next or anything like that will not work. They will not work. Why? I don't know. That's just English. So it's just something we deal with. It's something that's expected. So sentence one is a splice. Why? Because there is a comma separating two sentences. And the word then is actually a transition. It's not even a conjunction. There are only seven conjunctions. If you're not sure, go back and take a look where we talked about parts of speech. So how do we fix it? Well, we've got a couple of choices, don't we? Just put a period. He cleaned up his room. That's one sentence because it has he as the subject, cleans the verb. So this spotlight is on this person and the thing that they did was clean up a room. Okay, so we could put a period after room. Then we have a new sentence, he called. So he, he's doing two things. He's cleaning and he's calling. Those are nice sentences. So if we want, we put a period after room. Capital T, then he called his best friend. Um, I, I think I mentioned before, I, I see a problem with fixing every splice that way. You're going to end up writing nothing but short sentences. And th that's, um, that's fine. Uh, they're, they're correct, but they're pretty small, choppy, kind of boring if all of your writing is like that. It sounds like you're pretty um, simple-minded when it comes to sentences. You can only do one thought and then you have to put a period. And sophisticated writers will often combine their thoughts in one sentence. So, yes, you can. You could put a period after room. Another choice is, after the comma, if you really want to join the two, pick a conjunction. How about he cleaned up his room and then he called his friend? Now, not every conjunction works as effectively uh, in each sentence. So I think this is a bad idea. He cleaned up his room, but then he called his best friend. That makes no sense. I don't. But is supposed to show contrast. So be selective. When you pick that boys fan or fanboys, try to pick the one that you think is the most useful for whatever ideas you want. So there's another fix. Leave it just the way it is, but add a and after the comma. Third choice, I bet you remember... What else can we do? Okay, we could take out the comma and put in a semicolon. So that's the thing that looks like a comma with a dot over it. And that's a marker for any reader saying, hey, I just finished one thought, and I'm going to give you a brand new thought with a new subject. And we have a new subject, don't we? He, and we have a new verb, new, new action here, he called. So there's your third fix. So we go period, or we go semicolon, or we go comma and. All right, let's try the next sentence. She watched her favorite show on TV. It was about a plot to steal from a Las Vegas casino. Boy, there have been a lot of those kinds of movies, huh? So what's the problem here? Is that okay? No, it's not. Actually, you have, this time, it's a fused sentence. Why is it fused? Because it's shoving two ideas together with no indication at all that there are two ideas. Can you see where those two ideas break? I tried not to give it away when I was reading it. Take a look. It looks like the first part is talking about some female watching a show. And then we find out something about what the show was. So do you see between TV and it, there's definitely a break there. So we're going to fix it the same way we did number one. She watched her favorite show on TV, period, capital I. It was about a plot. Okay, again... The problem may be that you're going to end up with nothing but short sentences that way. So what's another fix? 
She watched her favorite show on TV, comma, and it was. All right, so that'll do it. That's a conjunction. Third possibility is get to TV and put a semicolon. That'll be like a flag to the reader saying, hey, pay attention, something new is going on here. All right, can we go to three? He presented his plan to the committee, but they were not impressed. Now, I put a little indication off to the side. That sentence is okay, and I bet you can figure it out. He presented his plan to the committee. Is that one idea? Yeah. They were not impressed. Okay, so first sentence is about him. The second sentence is about the reaction. Notice this time, there's a comma. What else is there besides the comma? Oh, there's but. Now, here's a perfect occasion to put but. And this time, I don't think works very well. But works great. So this guy's worked hard and he's put this plan out to the committee. Oh, they don't like it. They're not impressed. So... But works really well there. This is a comma, but as your solution to putting two sentences together. Okay, let's go to four. She often worked late to solve the company's budget problems. I see a semicolon. At last, she succeeded. What do you think? Well, you could look off to the side. You see my note there. It's okay. Why is this one okay? Think about it. What solves the connection problem between two sentences? Do you see the semicolon after problems? That semicolon says, that's the end of my first thought. I'm going to give you a brand new thought. And yeah, she worked late. She succeeded. Those are two different ideas. Number five, let's go back to another problem sentence. Three men were responsible for the crime. They immediately confessed at the police station. Do you see we have two ideas here again? Three men were responsible. So they've got the guys and they start confessing. They start singing like birds when they're at the police station. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And what do you want to do to put those two together? Well, you don't want to do that comma they. I don't see comma and, comma but, comma for, comma so. What if you wanted to fix it with one of those conjunctions? What do you think the best one would be? I guess you could say and. I think one of the better choices is three men were responsible for the crime, so they immediately confessed. In other words, they felt guilty and they got caught. So is one of your choices for your conjunctions. But you could have gone with a semicolon. You could have put a period there. All right, so it's always three fixes. Okay, let's go down. Let's try a few more. So that was five. Let's do... Get down here a little bit lower. Okay, let's try this. Number six. Whenever Pam called home, her mom would tell her how to meet the right man. Therefore, she hated to call home very often. Well... I see a sentence going to the word man, and I see another sentence starting with, because of this, she hates to call home, because her mom's always on her case. So you have a sentence up to the word man, you have a new sentence starting with therefore. Therefore is not one of those words that joins two sentences, it's another transition, it belongs to the second sentence. So let's put a period after man, let's put a semicolon there, or let's put a comma, and, and you've fixed it. But that's fused right now. Two sentences and no indication at all that there's a change. Number seven, they spent their spare time playing video games. They managed to get good at them. Can you see the problem? It's fused. Where do those two ideas break? They spent their spare time playing video games. Ooh, right there, stop. Because you have another subject coming up. They, and what they do, they manage to get good. So we have two thoughts. One is they're spending the time, and of course as a result, if you spend enough time, you get good at that. So what are we going to do? We're going to get to video games, and we're going to do what? What's our choice? Okay, period, capital T, semicolon, or comma, so, I think so would be your best choice, so they manage to get good at them. That's seven. Eight says, encountering many problems, take a look at that semicolon, we'll come back. He struggled to sell his novel, period. Now remember, we've talked about it several times. What does a semicolon indicate? It indicates one sentence is ending and a second sentence is starting. Well, what's the problem with number eight? Look at that semicolon. To the left of it, is that a sentence? To the right of it, is that a sentence? Well... To the right, I see he, that's our focus, that's the person, struggled. There's the verb. So we have 
a complete sense. He struggled to sell his novel. Here's the problem. Number eight, beginning with encountering many problems, period. Right? That's what a semicolon means, same as period. There's no subject. So what have we done? We've messed up the first part by putting the semicolon there, pretending that it's a sentence. No, it's not. So one fix for that would be Take out the semicolon. Let's just make it one sentence. Encountering many problems, he struggled to sell his novel. Because it is. It's only one sentence there. They're not two. Or maybe you fix the first part. Leave the semicolon and put, he encountered many problems. Semicolon. He struggled to sell his novel. If you get the he in there in, in the beginning of eight, you'll be okay. Number nine says this. The dog barking at the stranger who came to fix the washing machine. Now that looks pretty good. I see dog. Apparently the sentence is about a dog. And there's some action going on there. The dog happens to be barking at this poor guy coming in to fix a washing machine. So you say, well, that looks pretty good. Well, here's the problem. Do you remember those helping or auxiliary, uh, auxiliary verbs that we talked about? Take the verb barking. Could that be right now? Yeah. Could it be in the past? Yes. Could it be in the future? Yes. This sentence just says the dog barking. But when did this happen? Is it right now? If so, we need to say the dog is barking. If it happened in the past, and now your, your nerves are shocked because the dog barked all the time, and we could say the dog barked at the stranger, or the dog was barking at the stranger. Or let's say, oh man, you're thinking about, we've got this washing machine repair guy coming. And uh, that dog's going to go crazy. So that would be the dog will be barking or will bark at the stranger. So the problem is, yes, there's a verb, but it's not the complete verb. It's just a part of a verb. All right, let's do number 10. When she stopped at the red light located near the bank. That looks pretty good. We have a person driving and a person stops. We find out where she's stopping. And that looks okay. Can you see the problem? There's one word that's ruining this sentence. Do you see it? The word is when. That's called a, a uh, sub, subordinate conjunction. A subordinate conjunction. Okay, I know that's fancy terminology. But all it means is a subordinate conjunction gives you a part of a sentence but not a complete sentence. Let me give you another example and we'll come back to this one. If I say, because you are late people understand that's not a complete sentence. Or if I say, whenever she came to my house, that's not a sentence. If I say, while he was waiting, that's not a sentence. Those words like when or whenever or because or while, they're all subordinate conjunctions. They will give you a part of a sentence, but it's got to hook up to another part of the sentence. So here's a fix. This thing is actually a fragment. So when she stopped at the red light located near the bank, what happened? Keep going. When she stopped at the red light located near the bank, she saw her best friend. When she stopped at the red light located near the bank, her car stalled. When she stopped at the red light located near the bank, what? You, you can put something in there. So one fix is to leave this alone, add another part to it. So the when is only a part of a sentence. Uh, another possibility is if the when is the problem, get rid of it. So we'll just say she stopped at the red light located near the bank. Fine. That works well. So, again, this is Gary Zacharias. I hope these uh, examples will help you. Uh, feel free to email me. I'll be glad to send you a copy of the text. And uh, hope to see you next time. We'll move on to some other issues involving grammar. Okay, thanks.